Hey friends, welcome to today's video. I've got a DIY bauble box for you today. And uh, this photo slideshow that I'm showing you here is back in 2015 when I, I first attempted this project. And I made a few for family friends and it actually started out as a bit of a de-stash project. We had some uh, firewood left over from the winter and I was getting really into the Christmas spirit. And I thought, you know what? I might just try and paint some cute little woodland animals on these or I might just try and create some uh, little ornaments and, and see what I can do. And I had all this scrapbooking stuff just tons of it uh, begging to be used stickers and wood chip uh, chipboard embellishments and ribbons and you know gemstones all of this stuff that I needed to 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 use otherwise I'd feel so guilty that I kept on collecting it so I, uh, I did decide to do this project as a bit of a D stash and then I kind of loved it it uh, was a really great way to personalize this home decor piece and was such a great gift to give um, family friends and family and you know, to give it to yourself if you want. Um, but it was actually super simple to do. So it's, it's really just a shadow box with your hand painted stuff inside. A bit of an assemblage process at the end, but I know you guys are super capable with that. Um, I, I see the Instagram. I know you can do everything that I did in this video and you'd probably have more success at it because uh, you'll see this whole first part, I get I get a good deal of the way into this project and then I restart. Um, I, was, I was not happy with the direction that it was going in. The proportions were not the same as the sketch. And I know a lot of the times when we're trying to translate a sketch into a finished piece we kind of uh, you know we kind of lose what we loved about the sketch so I I did I end up just transferring the sketch onto the the little wooden disc and uh, these wooden discs I picked up at Hobby Lobby but I believe Target sells some now and uh, Michaels would probably sell them um, I feel like I've seen them everywhere to be honest but if you've got a tree outside or some old firewood you could totally do it as well um, I know that even just regular uh, you know they don't have to be this this actual wood you could just get the little ornaments from craft stores. You can do your any version of this, obviously, but I would encourage you to try it. And it's a great project for kids as well, because, um, you know, my Christmas tree at home has all of the projects that I did when I was a little boy, just kind of all over there. And it just evokes that spirit of Christmas and the love that I had for it as a child and, and how I still love it the same way now. And, and I'm still making handmade ornaments <laughs> to this day. Like I just, this is such a great project to have because, and especially if you're going to do it with friends or with family or kids, like, uh, you know, anyone can add their little decoration to this. If you've got a family that you just want to sit them down at night and give them all a bit of paint and a little wooden disc, then you could put all of their ornaments together in your shadow box. Buy a huge shadow box. Buy one that's like four feet wide by four feet wide and just put everything you can in there. I'd put myself in a shadow box if I could. I love shadow boxes. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, I did these in... You know what? Big W in Australia has really great shadow boxes. I don't know if they still do, but I used to get my shadow boxes from there all the time. I actually found it kind of difficult to get one here. I got one from Hobby Lobby that's quite long and thin, uh, which was beautiful for how I ended up assembling all of this, but it was kind of a little difficult to figure out um, the the arrangement of the pieces in that in, a, in that kind of a format. I like the square shadow boxes, the big 12 by 12s that you can get from Big W in Australia. So if you're an Aussie, uh, maybe check out Big W for your shadow boxes. They're, that's my recommendation for everybody else. Good luck. <laughs> and may the odds be ever in your favor. Um, but yeah, so this is a great project because um, it's super customizable. You can personalize this in any kind of way you want. And it's a great way to get rid of all that um, um, embellish all the embellishments that you kind of hoard throughout the year or over a lifetime especially scrapbooking stuff the stuff that we wouldn't put in our journal because it would just bulk it up a lot um, so I, I really do like this I've, I've done a little portraits on this of um, Steve and the cats and myself but uh, this was made for Steve so I, I knew it was gonna go in our home and I was being super particular about it and I, I didn't translate it the way I wanted to so I do end up starting again in about a minute, you'll see I, I start completely over again. <laughs> I just flip them over and paint on the back. And um, and I wanted to do a mid-century, mid-century modern kind of shadow box. I had some paper from Paper Source that was really beautiful. And uh, I knew that that would be a nice background. It was an old poster that Steve and I used to, like we hung for Christmas last year. And um, Steve spilled some water on it. So <laughs> it kind of warped a little bit. I know he was really upset about it. I feel like the paper was maybe five bucks from Paper Source. You know, they've got those beautiful papers, just um, there's lots of handmade ones and they've got them all in those racks on the side of the store. We just found one from there. It was just a Christmas poster with some, um, you know, vintage Christmas kind of 
feel to it. So I do end up using that in the background. There you can see I've used the chalk pencil. I've actually just taken the chalk pencil, drawn on the back of the sketch, and then pressed hard with my pencil over the top of it to uh, transfer that chalk onto the, the little ornament. So that worked out fantastic. I'll show you slower um, when I do the cats how I did that, but it's, it's super simple. You don't even have to paint all of these. Um, I, I wanted to paint them because I, I'm not super confident with acrylics and I, especially like a really flat kind of acrylic, you know, in this very stylized mid-century kind of a, a cartoony kind of feel, I, um, I don't mind mixing acrylics and getting really loose and free with them, but being really particular with them, being really precise with them was kind of a bit of a challenge for me and I think that's why it took me so long to do it and I was just being so particular. Um, also working for Steve, for free, um, <laughs> is uh, Steve's a very hard client to work for. Um, he has a, such a keen eye for detail, which was what makes him so fantastic as a creative and a photographer, um, or a photographer and a creative, whatever order you want to say that in. <laughs> but um, he's, he's got such a great eye for detail and uh, he loves references, he loves story, he loves, he loves to build the whole project, you know what I mean? Like he's a creative from start to finish. I love to cut a lot of corners. So when I'm doing this for Steve, for free, because Steve doesn't pay for any of my projects. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. I'll, maybe I'll start charging him soon. No, I couldn't. I Look, half of the, half of me made this for me as well. I wanted it in the house. It was just going to be fun. And um, But obviously, if I painted it for me, it, there'd be a whole lot more glitter going on. And I think you know that. So, um, but yeah, I just wanted to paint it. You don't have to paint. You could um, collage stuff on there. If you've been checking out my Instagram, I actually have made some of these with the um, Tim Holtz Distress Mediums. Like I used a crackle medium for one of them and it was really beautiful. And um, I used paint pens, paint over pens, like paint markers over the top. I've used, uh, and lots of glitter, obviously. I've used the um, the vintage medium, which kind of got a brown tint to it, which was really, really beautiful. I printed one of my collage sheet elements on craft paper and collaged that over the top with the vintage medium. And it kind of looks really organic and like it is still kind of a part of the wood. And, um, and I think it's a really great way to cheat all of this step and not have to worry about painting. So maybe next time I'll just straight up decoupage over the top <laughs> uh, because the painting took a long, long time. It was fun to do sometimes. Um, for the parts that I was enjoying it, it was fun, but a lot of the times it just, it kind of stressed me out a little bit. There's a clip at the end where I, I do it in actual time where I show you me painting. I, I believe it's in actual time. And you can just see, uh, sometimes I'm, I'm feeling good and I've got, you know, the paintbrush is working the way I want it to. And then sometimes my hand just starts shaking. So sometimes I did have to turn off the camera because I was just getting in my head about it. And the more I thought about, you know, if I was staying inside the lines properly, or if I was doing it neat enough, uh, my hands would just start getting really shaky, which is kind of odd because I don't, um, I don't. I don't know if that's something that I've been struggling with this year. Maybe it was just this project. I don't know. It was just, you know, learning something new. I've obviously done a few projects on YouTube before that I've kind of um, been a bit nervous about and, and kind of sh stumbled my way through a little bit. Um, but, you know, as long as I'm happy in the end, I'm, I'm fine to show you that process. Um, sometimes, because I don't want you to think that I'm bashing my work. I just, I have a standard that I like, and especially if I'm going to put it up in my house, like, and it's going to match all the rest of the Christmas that we got going on, and I'm doing it for Steve, you know, primarily. I just, I, I want it to be so good. I want him to just love it. And uh, spoiler alert, he really did like it, so I was happy about that. <laughs> Here's the uh, Derwent chalk pencil. You can see I've drawn the cats. And I've actually just uh, put the chalk on the back. I've used them as a template just for the outline. The other ones I just straight up drew over, but you can see I'm pushing my pencil hard and that will transfer some of that chalk pastel onto the uh, wooden ornament. Then I just darken up the lines so I can see them a bit better. Well, I guess I lighten them up because it's a white pencil. So uh, that was the painting process for me. You could do anything. I mean, you could do your little um, Nordic uh, folk art kind of woodland creatures on there. I've made one of those before. Um, I've taken like elements of a, fa of a family, like someone's, uh, you know, one of the, the daughter was really into makeup. So I did like a little lipstick and a compact. And, um, you know, if, if someone's into playing music, you could draw their instrument on one or, um, but like I said, if you're going to do this with your family, like why not just give everyone an ornament and, uh, let's see what they come up with and then put them all in a shadow box in this arrangement. I just think it'd be such a beautiful memory, such a collaborative process and actually really fun for kids too. Um, I don't, I don't know many kids that wouldn't love just to sit down and, you know, destroy these ornaments with paint. Like, I know that's something I love. Maybe it's just me as a kid, but I, I love, the kids are so creative. Um, I was at church the other day 
and um, we we're talking about creativity. Well, not we. The pastor was talking about creativity, and um, everyone is creative, and I hope you know that. Like everyone has creativity in them, and um, the I think there was some statistic or something about like 98% of a certain demographic believes they are um, creative or would you know express you know inge ingenious creativity. Ingenious, yeah whatever. Um, and that group of people are kindergartners. And that's because they haven't been told yet that they're not creative. They haven't figured that out yet. So they, they are. You're just inherently creative. So I, I really think this is a great thing to get people involved in, even if they're a little bit um, combative, even if they're a little bit hesitant to start. I, I, I seriously, I think that once they start, they'll be into it more than you realize. <laughs> so I would encourage you to do this with friends and family and make it a collaborative process. Um, or just do it for yourself if you want to. Like this, is, it's it's fun. It's fun, and it's a great way to use up a lot of the stuff that we just kind of neglect um, with all our scrapbooking stash. Because I used to love scrapbooking. I used to do the twelve by twelves. Um, I did it more so when I was like a tween. Like I think I was about thirteen, maybe when I was into scrapbooking, and uh, kind of left that format for more like illustrative and uh, you know more more drawing kind of thing. I just go through so many phases. I think we all do. And it's it's good to run with your with your phases. Like, you know, don't feel like you have to do one thing because that's what people want you to do. Um, here's the assembly process. Wow, this just takes this takes a lot of time to figure out. And I, I did stack them on the little wood pieces that I painted underneath and I found that they actually hit the glass on top. So I did have to just grab an old cardboard box and just cut it up so I could kind of raise it and make a little 3D from the background and, um, and, and deal with it that way because I didn't want them to be too raised off the background that they'd hit the glass, but I did want them to have a bit of dimension. And this is just like all those paper stacking projects that I've, uh, I've shown on YouTube before. Um, this is the, this is the most fiddly process I find, uh, getting all your placement right. You can see there, I do start from the bottom and work my way up because I'm doing this, um, string detail, like this ribbon detail. And uh, I don't want the ribbon to cross over the top of all of my other paintings. So I'll start at the bottom, attach that ribbon, throw it all the way to the top where I want it to finish and then I'll glue over the top of those uh, just so they don't cross over the other paintings that I've done but this is a very fiddly process I have full faith and confidence that you'll get there um, because like I said you're all creative people and um, especially a lot of mixed media artists are big problem solvers I've noticed because uh, you know we make it our mission to use a lot of different mediums and try and put them all together in ways that'll work that in itself is a problem solving process so uh, stuff like this it'll give you a bit of a headache for a second but once you figure it out you'll be like oh great I I'm ready for next time one thing I want to say too, if you're working at an angle like I am, which is mostly just a problem for when we're videoing and like YouTubing, um, because I have to keep it under the frame of the camera and it's, it's a little bit of a ways away from where I'm working. Um, uh, the, the, the perspective is a little off. So you can see over my ornament, the one at the top, um, the, the ornament of me, I've actually got that cardboard had slipped out and I didn't even notice that until the end. So I did have to go back in and fix that. So just be careful and check that stuff from a, a front on angle, from a bird's eye view, from a, a flat kind of an angle that you can see that you, you know nothing's sticking out where you don't want it to be and uh, and that's just that would be my tip and my other tip is just to have fun and, and go nuts with it um, just bring back all the spirit of those creative Christmases you had when you're a kid when you were just so in love with like doing your Christmas coloring competitions and um, making handmade ornaments, making little clay nativity scenes and giving them to your parents to uh, put under the Christmas tree. And you know, you're beaming with pride and your parents are like, where am I going to put this? <laughs> Let me put it on the coffee table in the back of the, the back of the house. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's so much fun to look back on. And uh, because they're so personal, uh, personalizable, because they're so customizable and you can make them so personal to you. I think they're just so much fun. Like you could, if you color theme your Christmas, I don't because I love a very traditional like red green white gold Christmas um, but well, I guess is a, a color theme but if you like do a black and white Christmas you could make this in black and white if you want to collage it you can collage it if you want to go so nuts with glitter and uh, make it all holographic go for gold if you want to do transfers of uh, your family portraits on the on the wood you can search YouTube tutorials for doing uh, you know photo transfers on wood and uh, you can make that your project um, it's it's super simple there's a ton of different ways that you can make these your own and customize them and I would encourage you to give it to go uh, make a little bauble box if n if nothing else just grab a shadow box and see if you don't love what things look like in a shadow box I believe so much so much uh, that everything looks better framed 
Like any of your artwork looks better framed and uh, and especially like your craft pieces too look really great in frames So uh, that's that's my plug for shadow boxes. I'm almost finished I've got some stickles because I couldn't help myself. I had to put some glitter on there I just I'm, I showed a lot of restraint in this so I'm patting myself on the back for that I put the frame on and uh, I'm gonna show you some close-ups I'm in love with this so much if you pl if you do a bobble box Please tag me on Instagram so I can show you some love uh, Like subscribe the video do whatever you want to do. I'm so excited for Christmas and I can't wait to show you everything else. Bye!